A short update from Lusaka. Uh, I've been staying here uh, almost a week to find some new parts, uh, repair my computer, rest the legs, and um, I'm now with my with my friend Francois, cyclist from France, and together with him I will cycle to Livingstone, which is about five days, and then. Uh, in Livingstone, I should get some parts from South Africa, a new rim. Weightlessness, no gravity. Where we somewhere in between. I'm a ghost to you, you're a ghost. <laughs> And future tears, hooded eyes and weary brows, seek refuge in the night. They are the scatterings of Africa, each of which had So this was our second night camping together. together. Uh, I got a bit sick yesterday, diarrhea again, it's getting a bit better. Had to repair a puncture again this morning. Uh, Francois has already packed his tent and then we're gonna get some water there to well and then another day of cycling towards Livingstone. When you've seen and heard so much about a place, sometimes your expectations might be too high, but this is a place, it's really a natural wonder. After seeing the wonders of the Victoria Falls, Francois was getting ready to continue. I still had to wait a bit longer for my new rim and took the opportunity to take a swim in the Zambezi river. After my new rim finally arrived I left Livingstone and cycled over the same Zambezi river to cross the border into Botswana. That was probably the easiest and quickest border crossing in Africa and definitely the nicest immigration building. I'm in Botswana! The first night camping in Botswana. Uh, I think it will be easy to camp or at least to find places in Botswana. Very lightly populated, lots of space, uh, also lots of wild animals. So that's the thing I will be having to watch out for in Botswana. Uh, but I'm camping here now maybe one kilometer from, the, from town, from the border town Kazungulu. Uh, I will go back there first to get some water, get some food because afterwards it will be 
around 400 kilometers to the next big town. Bad situation. Elephants on that side and on that side of the road. And you don't want to go in between them. Thank you. Okay, first close encounter with elephants. Uh, there's absolutely no way I, I would go between them without the car escorting me. Because uh, there were a few young ones and then it's quite, well it's very tricky. But <laughs> it turned out they, they were actually 100 meters from where I was, I was camping this night. Uh, this 400 kilometer road from Kazungula to Nata is also know, uh, known as the Elephant Highway. And uh, well, just in the first three kilometers, I already know why. <laughs> I was just walking a bit here away from the road because I saw three very nice huge birds. I wanted to take a, wanted to take a photo of them. But then I stumbled upon this here. Holy moly. Dozens of elephants taking a bath. Partial remains of a dead elephant. Seems like one here. He's not looking happy. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I don't know what to say, it's... It's a hundred elephants here. Incredible. Thank you. I've 
never seen anything like this before. That was really one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. I'm not exaggerating, a hundred elephants next to a small pool on the side of the road. Males, females, small elephants making sounds incredible. And uh, yeah, I got past them unscathed. Um, tonight I will be camping here. Um, should be out of sight more or less from the road. Um, away from any walking tracks for, from animals. Uh, yeah, I hope I'll be safe here tonight. No visitors at the tent uh, during the night, fortunately. At least not uh, that I know of. <laughs> I did hear the roaring of the lions and the trumpeting of uh, elephants. But I don't think they, they came close. I uh, just saw yesterday, before I went to sleep, so some warthog uh, running here, but otherwise very nice quiet camping spot. <laughs> It's even too hot for the elephants today. They look for shelter under a tree, flapping their ears to cool themselves down. So I'm now having a stretch of 200 kilometers with absolutely nothing. So I'm carrying uh, around seven and a half liters of water, uh, which should be enough for like one and a half days. So I took a road away from the main road. Uh, this, uh, this sand road cuts straight through the Magadi Gadi pans. Uh, it's about 120 kilometers. And it's very, very sandy, very bumpy. And there will be absolutely nothing except for some cows. Hello. It's 8 o'clock in the morning now, temperature is still nice but it's already warming up quickly. In the next 50 kilometers the road will look like this. No change on the horizon. Oh, what an otherworldly landscape. I'm right in the middle of the Magadigadi pans. 
vast, vast area of dried up lake. And there's absolutely nothing in a circle of 150 kilometers. Unbelievable. So the car tracks have gone, they turned into that direction, away from where I'm going. I'm going straight there. Uh, so I'm now navigating using that tip of the tree line, and using the sun. Um, but yeah, the cycling is much tougher now, because I don't have a smooth surface from the cars. The salt descent all crumbled up. So dry. There it is. Kubu Island. Few kilometers to go. Very very tired. <laughs> Kubu Island <laughs> What a spectacular place Look at this baobab tree it's it's just immense and so is the salt pan all around the island This vast empty expanse here is the Kalahari Desert and on the other side of me uh, behind those trees uh, lies the Botetti River uh, maybe there is still some water in the river uh, in a few kilometers I will try to go towards the river and then follow a gravel path uh, along it there's more water than I thought there would be uh, I thought I would be able to to cross here, but well, 
obviously that's not going to work. Ah, oh, this is quite frustrating. Uh, I want to get to this Botete River for a nice camp spot. Ah, uh, but there's just no way, no way through these roads. Just so much sand. Ah, uh, only pushing, pushing, pushing. Finally made it to the Botete River. Uh, the two elephants on the other side walking up the up the river wall all sweaty so they, they put up a big fence here and I think it's to separate the wildlife area on that side from the cattle area on this side Asked for uh, directions from uh, some local guys. Uh, I saw on my map that there should be a lake somewhere around here, but I could not find any road towards it. But I think now I'm on the right track uh, to Ngami Lake. What a beautiful sunrise and what a very nice place. It was already dark before I finally got to the lake. It was quite far because it seems to be drying up a little. Uh, but it's a, it's a very nice area, very quiet. Just a dry and drink of master and a hound Turned a circus swing of luck He's coming down Down Can you shake it off just once for me? Your little glow just so we can see the snow blowing around your head. Hey, Mark. What do you use to fish? A net? Yeah. The fisherman on the Gami Lake showed me what it means to fish in a sustainable manner. New fishermen first take some kind of internship, after which they are allowed to fish for themselves with three nets. Small fish caught in the nets are thrown back into the lake and no fishing is allowed during the spawning period. This is a more successful net. <laughs> yeah, this one.
So back on the land, it was very nice to see how the people fish here and how they live and camp here. So they created this uh, like natural fence to protect themselves from the hippos which live in the lake. And well, of course, they invited me to have some lunch, fish, of course. Uh, yeah, very nice morning. So now ready to leave towards Namibia. Really driving me crazy. Not howling when she's waving her other hands in mine. Oh, all silhouette, she's growing. Got my back, she'll follow me down every street, no matter. I just passed the only village on this long road to the border, uh, but I managed to fill my water bottle. Now just a few more kilometers to Namibia, to the border. Hello? Somebody? To the border, right here. Uh, but seems a bit deserted here. No, nobody around. Hello? Hello, somebody! Lots of gates, but nobody around. Finally found some uh, soldiers in a camp near the border. And they told me the very, very unfortunate news that the border is closed. Uh, apparently only two big, bigger borders on the main road between Botswana and Namibia are open and this one is closed uh, <laughs> really unbelievable although the soldiers at the border could not help me crossing into Namibia uh, they did see my situation going the whole way back on this dirt road and they gave me some rations for the way back uh, some fish samp don't know what that is some drink think oh, some cheese oranges some biscuits <laughs> and <laughs> even a plastic bag for my phone if it would rain <laughs> believe it or not well for the last days weeks I haven't seen a single cloud, so I don't think I'll be needing this. Uh, anyway, I will eat a little bit now, then go the last 15 kilometers back to the village. Really, really hope I can hitchhike there, but in the entire day yesterday I saw two cars, so my hopes of finding a ride today are not very high. I found a shelter on the side of the road and decided to wait and wait, hoping that a car would pass which would offer me a ride. Eventually the waiting paid off 
and I put my bike in the back of a car. As I already knew by now, no journey in Africa goes smooth as planned. About halfway on the road back we ran out of fuel. But by now I also knew that people always find a solution here. And with a bit of patience eventually you will get where you want to go. Here I am, back to where I was two days ago. Went all the way to Kangwa, to the border post, all the way back, partly with a ride. I'm now at the main road here. And so I would continue north to the Mohembo border, where I would finally be allowed to enter Namibia.